Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now, in our final episode of this initial series on the operation of the marine sextant, we're going to talk about the use of an artificial horizon. Now, if you don't have access to a nice water horizon to yourself for a solar noon sighting, you can use what's called an artificial horizon. And they're very simple to use. Basically, all an artificial horizon is, is a pan that is just barely covered with some water or some coffee to give a reflective surface. And then you take your sighting off of that reflective surface. We'll go through the procedure in this episode. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now this is the basics of how to use a sextant. I'm going to give you one more thing to look at and we'll see if we can work our way through it. Because while I had a south view of the ocean when I was in Panama City, the only way I can get a south view of water is to go to the top of Lake Michigan. And I'm never there during solar noon. I'm generally there in the late afternoon. Now, that is something that we can work on a little bit later, and you can get readings at any time of the day. But solar noon is what we're going to start with. So how do I find a horizon to measure this angle from? Let's go ahead and have a quick look. Okay, this is the way that I measure my sextant readings because I don't have that nice horizon. When Lewis and Clark went out and explored the Louisiana Purchase, this is the way they got their sextant readings as well. What you do is you go out to the parking lot and you put a pan of water down on the ground. You put just enough water in it to fill the bottom. Now, why do you do that? Well, because you want a nice level surface, and as we know, water always finds its level. Now, what you do is you try and position yourself to a point that you can see the reflection of the sun in this pan of water. And there's the sun up there. So it's going to come down. It's going to reflect in the pan of water, and it's going to take off at exactly the same angle. That's your direct sight. Now, with your other sight, the reflected sight, you're going to line up the rays of light. And remember, these are all parallel, so that those two images of the sun either touch each other top to bottom or overlap. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But the bottom line is you want to find this angle right here. So what happens is this is the angle that you measure. That angle is exactly twice the angle to the object. So these two angles right here are equal. This angle is twice of those angles. Now, there's a couple of cool things about that. First of all, you don't need to make a dip correction. You do have to put in your index error first, no dip correction. You need to do your refraction error. And depending on how you look at the sun, you can put in a semi-diameter or not. So if you line up the sun, so it's inferior limb to inferior limb like that, you have to put in your semi-diameter correction. However, if you line up the sun, so that they're both the same and overlapping each other. I just drew them off to the side a little bit so you could see what was going on. But if you overlap this sun with that sun, you don't need to make a semi-diameter correction. Now there is one more point that I want to make. What if you're shooting stars? Now, first of all, when can you shoot stars? Because if you do them in the middle of the night, how are you going to find your horizon to measure the angle to? 
Generally, you have to do this just before sunrise or just after sunset. This is during a time called nautical twilight. And you can see the stars, and you just have enough light to be able to see the horizon as well. Now, say you're up here at the North Pole. Where's the North Star going to be? It's going to be directly over your head at 90 degrees. What's your latitude at the North Pole? It's 90 degrees. Now let's have a look at a sighting of Polaris. Now when are you going to be able to see Polaris? It's during something called nautical twilight, which means that the, you're at dawn or you're at dusk, generally just before or just after, and you have enough light to be able to see the horizon, but it's dark enough that the stars are starting to come out and you can identify Polaris. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. So what is this angle? Do we have an equivalent angle over here? Well, it's not really apparent, but we do know that 90 minus that angle equals this angle right here. And that angle equals that angle. Now, if you're following along, it should be rather obvious that that angle equals that angle. Because here we have two 90 degree angles, and we know what that one is. Now we know what that one is. And that's the cool thing about reading from the North Star. Whatever you read on the sextant after your corrections are done is your latitude. Now recall that our corrections are index error first always. Then we do dip angle, and dip angle may very well apply here. We do refraction. Now there's no semi-diameter to a star. A star is a point of light. However, there is something called a declination to the star, much like the sun has a geographic location that it's directly over. It's called the geographic point. There's a declination and a geographic point to the North Star. So, for example, instead of being directly at 90 degrees, it may be at 89 degrees 35 minutes. And you have to make a slight correction for that declination. And again, that's what we have the tables in the almanac for. And we'll go over those when we do the actual sightings. Now there's one more thing that I want to go over, and that's a three-point fix. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this and start off simple and then work our way up. Now let's just use a quick analogy that we're all familiar with. Okay, say we have a phone pole with a street light on top of it. And we believe that we're standing right here and that we're this distance from the phone pole. Now. If we know the direction and the angle to that phone pole, we can determine our location. Now, if our location is indeed right here, we can calculate that angle. It's an expected angle. Now, what happens if we actually measure the angle and it's a little bit larger? than we thought. Say we thought it was going to be 45 degrees, but it turns out to be 47 degrees. It's higher than the angle that we predicted. Now, if we were to stand there and point at the phone pole, we'd be pointing up 45 degrees. Now, what happens if we take a step back? We point downward a little bit. We decrease the angle. What if we take a step forward? Well, perspective tells us that we have to increase the angle slightly to see the light on the top of the phone pole. That's the concept behind a three-point fix. You know, before we go into the actual three-point fix, let's go ahead and kind of talk about something called a line of equal position. Now, say we have a geographic point of an astronomical body that's right there on the Earth. And we are somewhere on the Earth and we take a sextant reading of that, and we find out that our angle to that body is 10 degrees. That means that we are on a circle that is 600 miles from that body. Now, we could be anywhere on that circle. Say we know we're in the northern hemisphere. Okay, well, that narrows it down a little bit. And we can also say, well, we know that the direction to that 
is a certain number of degrees, and that'll narrow it down a little bit too. But look how thick these lines are. How many miles wide are those lines on the surface of the Earth? Really can't tell too much from that, all right? It's not as helpful as you would think it would be. But say we have another object that's over here. And as it turns out, we're 10 degrees from that object as well, 600 miles. So we're somewhere on that line of position. Now, when you have two circles that are intersecting, there's only two points that you could possibly be, and those are those two points right there. So what else can you do? Well, let's find another one up here. Now, if we look at that one and we measure it out, we find that that is our line of position. That means that that is our location. That's a three-point fix because we've got one, two, three points that we're measuring from and we're getting these circles of equal position. Now let's go see how that's done practically. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that we knew exactly where we were right here. We were at 45 degrees north and we were at 85 degrees west. Now, we sailed due north at six knots for 10 hours. Where are we? Well, the difference of one degree of latitude is 60 nautical miles. So, we sailed north for 10 hours at six knots, we should be right here at 85 west and 46 north. Now this would be a pretty good trick because this is actually a land location. So let's just kind of go with the flow for a minute, all right? So, we knew that we were here. Now, after we've moved along, we think we're here. And that's called a dead reckoning position. Now, if we're at 46 degrees north, we would expect that, say, we had a star in this direction, and we could identify that star, and it was going to be at 35 degrees above the horizon. So, let's go ahead and have a look at that. Say we shoot that star, and we find out instead of being 35 degrees, it's 34 degrees. So where are we? Well, we're 60 miles that way. And we're along this line somewhere, which is 60 miles from our position. Now, say we have another star that's over here. And we know the angle to that star. So we know the bearing to that star, and that star should be at 45 degrees. Well, we measure it, and we're at 46 degrees. So where are we? We're not here. We're 60 miles closer to that star than we thought it was. And it's not closer to the star. It's closer to the geographic point over the ground. So we can draw a line like this. Now let's say that we have a star out here, and when we look at that star, we should, from this direction, from this point, we should see it at 52 degrees. Well, we measure that, and we find out that we're at 53. So in reality, we're not here, we're closer. And there's our line of position for that star. So. Here's our dead reckoning point. The only place that we can be to get these readings that we got is right there, and that is our actual position. That's how a three-star fix works. So, now you know the very basics of how a sextant works. Now, I'm new at this. I'm by no means an expert. I could spend years learning how to do this, and many navigators do. But that's the basics of it, so that at least if you bought yourself a sextant, you could go out and actually take measurements like I did. And quite frankly, I'm pretty proud of my measurements. When I first started off, I was getting readings around 10 or 15 miles from my actual location. And according to the books that I have, that's generally good enough because you can see the island from 10 or 15 miles. But my last few readings have been below 
three miles. So I'm starting to get pretty good at that. And that's using the artificial horizon with a little pan of water. Now, I did a Polaris fix from Marquette, Michigan. And I did direct sun fixes on the horizon down in Panama City Beach. And I'm getting very good results. I'm definitely within three miles on these things. So with a little bit of practice, it's easy enough to do. So I hope that helped you out a little bit. On Friday, we're going to actually work a few position fixes that I took in the last week or two and put this all into practical use. But that's the mathematics behind it. So thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Uh, in our next few episodes, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at the ancient Greek mathematics that determine the distance from the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, etc., and the size of the Earth. So we'll go through all the math behind that. And those are things that you can do at home yourself to verify these distances. So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe on your way out, by the way. Bye, 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 the science guy.